You know, I found in my own journey that traditional talk therapy I was getting stuck in um, and because it was like just talking about the same trauma over and over and over again. And it was like just continuing that same pattern. So. Welcome back, Empower Nation, to another episode of Empower Her Money Podcast. I'm your host, Angela Duncan. Today's episode, I get to interview Brooke. She's a life coaching goddess. And we're going to talk today about unlocking your trauma, why it's important, becoming aware, what is NLP and RTT. And you definitely want to check out her emotional quiz, which is located on her website. Today's episode is sponsored by morewithangela.com, where we are bringing passive opportunities for you to invest in, bringing those strategies from the wealthy to you every day, morewithangela.com. Book your call directly with me. Let me help you on your passive income journey. Keep more, make more, live more, morewithangela.com. Hi, Brooke. Welcome to Empower Her Money podcast. How are you today? I am lovely. So excited to have this conversation with you. Yeah, same, same. Um, I am very interested in teaching our audience a little bit more about what you do. Before we get started, though, I would like for you to kind of start off with your journey. How did you get to being the coach and many other things you're doing today? <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so I wasn't always doing this. Obviously, I was really heavily in the beauty industry. Loved that. It was great work, but I was making people look beautiful and feel beautiful on the outside. But I was recognizing that I had this deep desire to make people feel good on the inside because I had really struggled with my own mental health, um, having complex PTSD, anxiety, and dealing with some depression because of my experience of life. Um, I was raised in a cult. And so it was a very um, controlling and shame and fear-based um, space. And so I felt as I was growing up that I was never enough. And then I had um, an abusive father that made me also feel like I was never enough. And so I continue to recreate that pattern throughout my life by finding a man that continued to make me feel like I was not enough. And so I stayed in that relationship for 17 years. And when I broke free from the cult and that relationship, I recognized that I needed to do some deeper healing. And I went on that journey um, and then I discovered the work that I do today, which is RTT, Rapid Transformational Therapy, and how powerful that was to help me break through a lot of my mental blocks, my emotional blocks, um, to be able to just really live a more fulfilling, um, thriving life where I could really find my authentic self and my voice again. I had suppressed my voice for so long living in the environment that I did. So this is why I do this work. And because I find women deserve to feel this type of transformation. Yeah. And I'm a bit big advocate, you know, um, while I didn't grow up in a cult, the abusive background is where my childhood was too. So I can understand that and that never feeling like you're enough or you're always mm -hmm. trying to earn right when I really love should be given to you and not necessarily earned. So big advocate for what you do. Um, let's talk a little bit about your book. I know you're a best-selling author. What kind of inspired you to write it? Talk about the book and what we can learn from it as well. Sure. So I wrote actually a children's book. It's called The Grief Monster. Uh, it's about a little boy that loses his dad and discovers that he needs to kind of go on the starting to understand grief and to kind of like be able to express it. Um, and the reason why I wrote this book is because my children lost their father in 2020. And with our own grief and experiencing my children's grief, I realized that there was um, not enough books out there to help children with their emotional intelligence in such a heavy subject. So I felt called to write this book. And I'm really glad that I did because it ended up being the most beautiful book um, and just really an expression of what my children needed at that time. So, um, and it became, you know, a national bestseller and I've been really excited to share this with the world and it continues to give back. I find people that are like, we just lost so-and-so and, you know, how do we get a hold of your book? And so it's just showing that it's reaching the people that it needs to reach. Yeah. And I, I think that's true too, because, you know, our society has what I think we call norms, right? But 
how you can help a child through that because they're not always as vocal or they don't know how to use their words to get themselves through it. And they're not even understanding that that deep rooted trauma, as we know, if you don't deal with it, it's just going to stay there forever. So I love that inspiration behind the book. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And I think it's honestly um, going to be lead into other books. I'm actually starting the second book right now. Um, and it's going to be teaching kids really the entirety of emotional intelligence. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really having a lot of fun being playful in this space. How do you coach parents, for example? So you're a parent and um, helping them, helping children to recognize their feelings or understand that they have feelings and being able to vocalize it. What kind of tips could you give to parents so that we can ensure that our kids feel safe in expressing their emotions? So I don't normally coach parents necessarily, but that is part of my work, right? I really help women to embrace themselves, um, either if they've been in abusive relationships or still currently. But of course, there's always kids involved in this, right? And being able to really help children um, sit with their emotions. You know, a lot of the times I think in our society, we've really taught people to be like, be tough, right? Like you don't need to sit with that emotion or, you go, do, or stop crying. Why are you being so sensitive? Right. And it's not what we need to be doing. What it's ha what's happening is it's causing some really wounded children to continue to perpetuate this trauma. And we need to break through that so we can have children that ha are healthy. Um, because as we probably know, there's so many more kids out there that have depression and anxiety and suicide is at like an all time high for these children. So it's really being able to say, oh, hey, if we can sit with our emotions, we're going to be able to face them and not suppress them or feel like we are have to close them off. And that's going to make kids overall more healthy mentally and emotionally. That's such a good love that love that teaching. Um, I was at a church um, a few weeks ago. And at the end, you know, the pastor said, if you're dealing with anxiety or depression, you know, come to the front and we'll come pray with you. And I was just shocked at how many kids, and when I say kids, you know, like teenagers were yeah. coming up to the front one congratulations. They're aware that they're feeling that emotion, but that, that generation is, is suffering from that so much. It really broke my heart, especially as a parent. Um, you touched on your coaching program a little bit, talk more about why you decided to coach and kind of how you help um, your clients today. Yeah, for sure. Um, I decided to coach because I needed the version that I am today as I show up for women back when I was coming out of my relationship. So I, this was, I knew this was my path because I'm like, gosh, if I would have had somebody like myself, I would have been able to move through the really difficult spaces that I felt really stuck in. Um, and the, what I do really with women is it's, it's, a, it's about going back into the foundational um, parts of yourself that were programmed and conditioned since childhood, because we're recreating our life as adults from our original programming and our original conditioning. And so really going back into those stories and those experiences of life is really a bottom-up approach of, you know, really facing what is trauma. And some of it's maybe not really big trauma. Maybe it's just small uh, negative beliefs, you know, that, that I am not enough is a huge core or abandonment or betrayal or violation whatever that is, going back into those experiences, reprocessing them, really feeling more free of them and being able to kind of rewrite your story so that you're not um, reacting to life from the past, but you're actually responding to life. So really being able to heal yourself in a holistic way, mind, body, and spirit so that you can be more connected to your true self. Yeah. Yeah. If you come across someone who says, you know, oh, therapy hasn't worked for me in the past, or they're just nervous or anxious about starting therapy, what are some things that you might tell them to help them get to a place where you know that you can now be able to coach with them? Mm, I love that. That's a great question. Um, you know, I found in my own journey that traditional talk therapy, I was getting stuck in. Um, and because it was like just talking about the same trauma over and over and over again. And it was like, just continuing that same pattern. So I would say, yeah, sometimes maybe, you, maybe therapy didn't work for you. Maybe it's because you need to try a different route. Maybe you need to see maybe, and, and maybe it's not just one modality that you think is going to work. And for me, it was multiple modalities, so it's multiple, you know, being able to recognize that you need to maybe kind of look at it in an approach that there's tons of facets to therapy into helping you to heal 
and that maybe that one didn't work for you. Like, and that's okay. But being curious enough to say, what does work? Let me see. Let me be curious what I feel called to do and then going and taking the action and doing it. That's great advice too, because just because you tried one form doesn't necessarily mean that the therapy itself doesn't work. It just means that that type of therapy was not what's best for you. And then there's other ways too. Completely. Yeah. Because I think, you know, we, we want to try to like, keep trying to make something work and then we get frustrated when it doesn't work. Well, then recognize that maybe that's just not the way that you need what you need, or maybe it's the person, right? Maybe that person is not what you need, right? Um, you in a lot of the times, even for myself, I needed a therapist or a coach that had been through what I have experienced, mm-hmm. because then they can see it through the lens of I know exactly how you felt, and that made me feel seen and heard, which I had never experienced all my life. So if I would always tell people. Find the person that has experienced in life what you experienced so that they can sit with you and you can feel really witnessed and observed and seen. And that really is the biggest healing space for women. Yeah, I get that too, because you can read about trauma in a book, but until you've walked that life, no one really can understand what you are feeling or what you may have been still holding on to even subconsciously, right? From, from that perspective. I think the same is true in business and investing and you want to connect with someone who's been there, done that so they can teach you what you need to know to kind of get through that. So that's good information too. You're also a podcast host. I always like asking the question, what inspired you to start your podcast and how you feel like it's hopefully helping people? (laughs) Yeah, honestly, it was about unlocking my own voice um, because I never had, I never was able to have a voice. Um, That was very suppressed. I was also taught that women are like, you know, need to stay quiet, need to do as they're told. And so I was had that good girl programming. And I was like, I don't want to be quiet anymore. I want to be able to express myself and use my voice and also help women um, through my own experience by what I bring to the table in my podcast to be able to recognize that they deserve that and that they are worthy to be able to use their voice in that way, too. That's really important. And for the audience listening to, if you're looking to start your, you know, really have a voice and use your voice and practice, podcasting has been amazing. You don't have to start your own. You can always be a guest, Mm -hmm. Um, but that that's a great tip on, you know, helping to heal is really not only telling your story, finding your voice, but hoping that your story is going to, you know, resonate with someone and perhaps you're going to help change their lives too. So I absolutely adore that um, about your podcast. What's next for you? What do you feel like is next in your journey? So actually my, the next part of my journey is I'm currently looking for a literary agent. Um, I, I, I finished up my book um, with my editor um, just recently. It's the book about really my memoir um, and going to look for a publisher with a literary agent. So that's like, you know, my really big project that has really been a huge part of my healing journey um, for the past four years is writing this book and knowing that this was meant to be kind of birthed into the world. So that's a huge project for me. And it has been a little daunting. It's brought up a little fear in me, like, oh my gosh, is anyone going to want to even read my book? Um, but also recognizing that this part of the journey was exactly the what it needed to happen so that I could really um, break through those beliefs, right? We have a lot of those subconscious beliefs that we kind of hold on to and, and recognizing that, you know, we can do what we want to do. We can birth the dream that we want, or if we have a desire that we can do what we want. Yeah. I think that thought is in most authors. Is anybody going to read my book? But but like you said, you know, writing the book is part of your healing journey. It's helping you to heal too. So while you hope that you're impacting other people and and that they're going to want to read your book, the healing process, um, that's probably been a, a big part for this, this book as well. For sure. Yes. It really has given me so much um, clarity. It's giving me so much uh, more self-love for my own self and being able to just um, work through and process really the the traumatic events of my life in a different way. Yeah. I was poking around your website before we hopped on this uh, podcast and I saw that you have a quiz. I would love for more information about the quiz, the purpose behind it. And of course, how can people um, get that quiz from you? 
Sure. So it's basically an emotional trauma quiz to kind of understand yourself a little bit of like, you know, what did, was your experience of life, right? Are you still holding on to some emotional baggage that really needs to be released? Um, and a lot of the times, you know, we want to suppress that emotional baggage. So we're like, oh, I just want to leave it alone. Like we'll put it in a box and we'll start away and we'll not think about it. Well, unfortunately, it's still all there within you, right? And we're still reacting from that emotional baggage or those traumatic responses um, from the past. And so really unpacking it and seeing it for what it is, is really helpful. So this is just helping you identify, okay, what is my experience? How much emotional trauma do I maybe have inside of me that really needs to be witnessed and observed and understood um, and helping people kind of get clear about that so they can kind of be curious about, okay, what's my next step? Yeah. Do you think that people, maybe that is their first step is becoming aware that maybe something is there and then becoming curious on now, what do I do? Completely. That is the first step. It's about the awareness. Okay. Something's not right. You know, something is, you know, I'm feeling this certain way. Maybe you're having like repeated uh, arguments in your relationship, right? Maybe you're reacting to life, you know, in an angry or hostile way, or maybe you're just not able to function the best way possible where you have anxiety or you have a depression well then there's some emotional trauma and baggage that needs to be released and it's just about having that awareness okay this is not working anymore like i'm continuing trying to make this work and it's, i'm just exhausted and then being able to face it is really the biggest part of your courage yeah and i think that in the coaching aspect too until someone becomes aware of that behavior or aware that they might need help then they're not going to be open to receiving what you have to give Yes, they have to be open to know that they need help. And then they're going to want to go and search for that help. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, Brooke, I have a fun question for you. If you could pick a superpower, what would it be and why? Mm, I love this one. It's so much fun. Um, honestly, I would say that if I can have a superpower, it would be to fly. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, and be able to like, just be able to experience the world in a different way from a different perspective. Like, and because I feel like, you know, when we are like in the plane, like you, like we're looking down on everything and like, it feels like, Ooh, this is so beautiful. So I mean, if I can have a superpower, why not? <laughs> So I've heard the response a couple of times, but I like how you went into more detail because some people want to fly to get to a place, but for you, it sounds like you want a different perspective, right? Yeah. A different perspective. Yeah. Like to be able to be observer of like this great big world, like how amazing would that be? Yeah. I love that answer. All right, Brooke, if our audience wants to get in touch with you, um, the quiz, your coaching program, what's the best way for them to reach you? They can go directly to lifecoachinggoddess.com. The quiz will pop up immediately and they can take the quiz or they can just kind of discover a little bit more about the work that I do there. Awesome. Brooke, thank you so much for your time. Yes. Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it, hon. Thank you so much for tuning into Empower Her Money podcast. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, share this podcast and leave a review wherever you are tuning in.